Hey there, Math 8. Thanks for tuning in with another lesson of Math with Mullins. Today we're looking at lesson 1.4, day 2, still in that operations with fractions mode, but now we're going to talk about adding and subtracting fractions. One key thing we want to make sure we understand about adding and subtracting fractions is we want to be able to put them into improper form. Again, you don't have to do this. This I found is the best, most efficient way. We want to get that common denominator add or subtract the numerator, whatever the sign is telling us to do, keeping the denominator, and then simplify. A lot of these um, fractions will be in improper form, and that is okay. You obviously need to stick with your teacher and what they're asking you to do, but I'm okay with you guys sticking with improper fractions. So let's go ahead and get started. These are two good examples. If you want to take time now and pause the video, maybe find a, the least common denominator with them. Um, if you're ready to do that by yourself, if not, you can keep watching now, but I'm going to give you a moment to pause the video and try these by yourself. All right, so let's try this first one. The first thing that we need to understand is both 3 and 8 are different denominators. We want that same denominator. One way you can do that is list the multiples of your biggest number, 8, 16, 24. And right here, 24 is also a common multiple of 3. So what we should do is change our denominator to 24. 3 times 8 would give me 24, so I'm going to have that rule of equality and multiply times 8 with 5, and I'm going to get 40. And then 8 times 3 gives me 24, so rule of equality says 3 times 3 would give me 9. When I add them together, I get 49 on the top, because I'm just doing 40 plus 9. And because I worked hard to get that denominator, I'm going to keep the denominator the same. 49 24 cannot be simplified, so we're going to keep it like it is. The next one, noticing again, different denominators. This time, one of the denominators is actually a multiple. So if you notice that 4 can go into 16, all we have to do is change this 1 fourth. I'm going to multiply 4 by 4 and 1 by 4 to get a denominator of 16. That would be equal to 4 16 So all I'm going to add is 4 16 and 3 16 I would get 7 16 Whoops, not 7 17 And can't simplify it, so that's my final answer for that first part. Here are two additional questions. Again, we're seeing some subtraction here. Again, maybe take the time now to pause here first before you um, see, me see me complete these questions. When you're ready to try them and check them, go ahead and click play. So the second one, I only have to change to a nine because that first one already has that nine. So seven ninths is good. And then one third is just gonna change to three ninths. Here, I'm subtracting. So seven minus three is four, keeping that bottom number the same to get four ninths. This next one, I do have a seven and a three. Neither one is a common multiple, so I'll start with the biggest number. Multiples of seven are seven, 14, 21, and I'm gonna stop right there because 21 is also a multiple of three. So changing both of our denominators to 21, seven times three makes that possible. So I'm gonna do 18 times three. That's gonna give me 54. And then Three times seven will give me that 21. So two times seven is 14. 54 minus 14 is 40, keeping the denominator the same of 21. All right, here are, some, here are two more. Um, we'll finish up in just a moment with some mixed numbers. So we haven't seen those yet. Again, take time now to pause the video. And when you're ready, click play to check your work. So both of these four and five denominators can be changed to 20. So we're gonna multiply these by five and this fraction over here by four. So five times 15 is 75, five times four is 20, that's the desired denominator. And then over here, 18 times four is 72, denominator five times four, also 20. Adding together, we should get 147 over 20. Again, 3 sevenths minus 19 fourteenths. I can easily multiply 7 times 2 to make that a 14. So I'm going to get 6 fourteenths minus 19 fourteenths. Now here's where we want to be careful because if you notice, I'm doing a 6 minus 19. That's a smaller number minus larger number. So I'm going to end up with a negative 13 over 14. How'd you do? Our next two examples are two of examples that are mixed numbers. So the first thing I want to do is change these to improper fractions. Go ahead and now take time now to pause the video, try changing them to improper fractions, and when you're ready, click play. All right, one and five sevenths is going to be 12 sevenths. Two and three fourths is going to be 11 fourths. 
Again, seven and four have 28 in common, so I'm gonna multiply my first fraction by four, my second fraction by seven. Four times 12 is 48 over 28, and 11 times seven is 77 over 28. So I'm gonna add these two together and I should get 125 over 28, okay? Again, taking the time to change these mixed numbers over here into improper fractions, this first one, 6 and 1 third, I get 19 thirds. And 2 and 7 twelfths, that's 24 plus 7, that's 31 twelfths. Okay? The nice thing about this one, 12 is a common multiple, so I only have to fix one fraction. 4 times 3 would give me that 12, so 4 times 19 would be 76. So 76 twelfths minus 31 twelfths. And I'm going to get... 45 twelfths. Now here is something that you want to consider. 45 and 12 can be reduced by 3. 3 is that tricky one where you have even and odd multiples. Here, when you reduce it, you're going to get 15 fourths. Again, these could be changed into mixed numbers. I'm just trying to keep it simple and efficient for you so that you don't necessarily always have to change back to mixed numbers. One final example, and then we'll complete our section of notes for today. Again, we're going to change to improper's first. So again, let's pause, try it on your own. When you're ready to check it, click play. So 15 and 1 third is going to change to 16 thirds, and 9 and 5 6 is going to change to 59 6. Easy way to find this one is I'm just going to change this first one to have a denominator of 6. So that should be 32 6 minus 59 6 being very careful of what I'm subtracting here I am going to get a negative I'm going to end up having negative 27 over 6 27 and 6 can both be reduced so let's simplify them by 3 and I get negative 9 over 2 okay that's going to conclude our quick and easy lesson on adding and subtracting fractions thanks so much for tuning in and we'll catch you next time